uh, is that the narrative changed. Like a first couple of days, everybody in the SEC, not everybody, but uh, quite a few teams took it on the chin. It's, ah, the SEC is overrated. Then all of a sudden, you know, A&M flirts with the Sweet 16. Tennessee and Auburn make the Sweet 16. And before you know it, you had a chance of half the Final Four being from the SEC. Tennessee did not come through with that, playing a virtual road game at Purdue. And uh, Alabama did come through pulling off an upset in their own right. So where do we where do we stand now with the SEC in the uh, Final Four? Well, Bama is getting 11 and a half points from UConn. They are plus 1,600 to win the whole thing. Plus 1,600. So we'll see if you're looking. That's the longest shot of any team to win it all. It's Alabama. And by the way, you also have Georgia in the NIT Final Four. I know... Who cares, what have you. But for Mike White and that program, which has been a classic underachiever for a long, long time, those games actually mean something for them. They're, they're trying to kind of get their footing. they got a good recruiting class coming in. As JC has pointed out a number of times, some of their best players this year were younger players that they hope will, uh, will come back. So we shall see. Uh, in ba- Major League Baseball, opening day came and went. Anybody want to guess what conference has the most players on opening day rosters? SoCon. Sun Belt. Man, I was going to say Mountain West. Maybe maybe, maybe the SEC, and if I'm not mistaken, I think Mississippi State and Vandy have the most players too, right? Uh, yes. Well, no. You're half right. <laughs> You're half right. So the SEC leads the way with 88 for I don't know how many years in a row. By the way, you want to guess what conference is second? SoCon. All right. Is there anybody that I, have a well, non-smart ass the, remark to this? I'd say question? the ACC. That's an <laughs> no, ACC. I'd, I'd say the, I was go I'd say the Big, 12, yeah. Big Twelve or Pac Twelve. It's the Pack, yeah. or what we yeah. uh, the artist the artist formerly <laughs> known as the Pack. Yeah. Uh, so eighty-eight. The program that has the most of any team is Louisville. Nine guys. Uh, catcher Will Smith's an all-star. Adam Duvall still going around. Nick Birdie still throwing 100 miles an hour and giving up walk-off grannies to the Gauchos uh, to go to Omaha. Arizona mm. State is mm. second with eight, tied with Vandy and Florida. So, Jamie, you were half right. Vandy and Florida each have eight. Wyatt Langford, by the way. Ah, oh, crazy. Starting on opening day. Yeah. Last Got a hit. June, yeah. He has hit 333. Last June, he was in a Florida uniform in the postseason, uh, and now he's on an MLB roster. That does not happen very often, especially for an everyday player. Usually you got to get a hell of a lot more cuts in the minors before you're ready to, to make it to the show. But Vandy, Florida with eight. Arkansas, Mississippi State, A&M with seven. LSU with six. And Ole Miss with five. I also have the... Uh, Gamecocks have five. Correct. Uh, sorry, I was I was about to mention all five of their names. Oh. I have that right here as it just happens to turn out. You know, these always work a lot better when your mic doesn't cut off in the middle of the segment and papers start flying, but I'm, I'm not going to be faced by it. Jonah Bride, Whit Merrifield, Carmen Mladinsky. Majinsky. Clark, what's that? Majinsky. Majinsky, yeah. Clark Schmidt and, of course, Christian Walker. Again, I'm happy to see Whit in the National League. That would be uh, yeah. a welcome addition to see him more, especially and coming it, to And Atlanta. in Atlanta. Yeah. 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 A lot more uh, How many Gamecock games are they fans in Atlanta, Mike? Like well, it used to be, I think they finally have adjusted the schedule, uh, but it used to be you would play your Eastern Division opponents 19 times. Yeah. So he would come either nine or 10 times to Truist Park. Uh, I'll have to double check with the uh, new format how that's changed. Looking at this, not to get you off track here, yeah, but you don't see this often, uh, and unless I'm just bat blank blind here. Um, but the Phillies don't come to Atlanta for their first trip of the year until July the fifth. Wow. So they backloaded it. You know why they did that? Because those are the two teams predicted to battle for the East as the Braves try to win seven in a row. So they're just trying to get as many of those when it really matters. Here's my thing on on baseball. 
when somebody says, hey, you know, uh, boy, the Braves are two and a half games out of first on April the 22nd, I don't care. Uh, until it's mid-May, I don't even look at the standings. For college baseball, we're now at the point where everybody in the uh, SEC, at least, has played, what, nine conference games. After next weekend against AM, everybody will have 12. That's when I really start paying attention. That yep. means everybody's played two conference series at home and two on the road. Uh, obviously, that's not all the same. You know, somebody gets to pick on Missouri, somebody doesn't. But you get a better idea of who is what at that point in the season. So Great I'll point. go over these polls, but I, I they'll they'll carry a lot more weight, and the standings will carry a lot more weight to me after next weekend. But yes, D1 baseball has a new poll out. Arkansas won 23 and three. They put together a 4-0 week. They swept LSU. That ain't easy to do. Clemson 2, AM 3, Tennessee 4. The Beavers. Nice Beaver. Uh, number 5, Florida 6, Vandy 7. Dallas Baptist at 8. I actually did a game there. They have a phenomenal stadium. Like, that is their sport. Uh, they are legit. Uh, they're 8. Duke 9. Tar Heels 10, Alabama 13, Kentucky 17. Kentucky just pulled off its first ever sweep in Oxford. LSU dropping to 18, Carolina dropping to 22 from mm. 18 a week ago. 22. And of course, the standings in the East, Kentucky number one at 8 and 1. They will battle Arkansas. So the two top teams with the top records, I should say, will go head to head this coming week. We'll see just how good Kentucky is. Vandy and Florida tied for second at six and three. Tennessee and Carolina tied for third in the East at five and four. All right, going to segue to football to wrap things up here. I get it. The the poll means nothing. Uh, we could beat up Athlon on this, or you could just kind of take it with a grain of salt. What I found interesting, just doing a deep dive on the quarterbacks for next season in the SEC. Remember, there's 16 teams now. Eight are returning starters. Eight will be newbies. Of course, Carolina will be one of the eight that have newbies. So this particular poll, and they're not that different. Like, they're all around the same. So before you um, before you pounce on where they have sellers rated, he's within two or three spots in almost every one of these polls. And a lot of people are actually high on Lenore Sellers. There's one guy from Yahoo. It's like, wait till you see this guy. He's going to be a star. Um, but as of right now, this is from Athlon. Carson Beck won for Georgia. Anybody going to argue that? Anybody? Mm. Bueller? Uh, kind of a Robbie Ashford guy, but I hear you. Two, Jalen Monroe of Alabama. Three, Quinn Ewers of Texas. Four, Jackson Dart of Ole Miss. So the top four are all returning starters, and guess what they all have in common? They're all expected to have big years in the SEC, right? I mean, uh, Georgia's going to be the preseason pick. Alabama's going to be right there close to them. Texas is going to be picked very highly. And people are all loving Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin right now with Jackson Dart back behind center. Number five on the on the list is the first newbie, and that's Nico over there in Knoxville, who did start a Citrus Bowl, went 12 and 19 for 151. But again, it's his first year as a regular starter. And you've got Brady Cook. What does he have in common? Another returning starter. So five out of the first six in the rankings are returning starters. Then you've got Garrett Nussmeyer of LSU. Nussmeyer's been good enough to play for a while, but obviously when you're playing behind the Heisman Trophy winner, you don't get a whole lot of reps. But he's at seven. Connor Wigman of AM, eight. Jackson Arnold of Oklahoma, he's a newbie, nine. Five star prospect in the 23 class, JC, is Mr. Arnold. I don't know much else about him, but. He the did, reason uh, D- Dylan Gabriel went to Oregon. So. Yeah. So D- Dylan heard footsteps is what you're saying. Uh, That's the, yeah, what the word is out, out of Oklahoma. Yeah. I believe it. I've never been a big Dylan Gabriel guy. He's, he, started, he started the Alamo Bowl against Arizona. He did throw three picks and 361 yards. Very Brett Farvish. Graham Mertz of Florida, 10, a, a returner. Peyton Thorne of Auburn, 11. Blake Shapin, newbie for Mississippi State, playing in that Jeff Levy new offense. He had a kind of an up-and-down career at Baylor. Diego Pavia at Vanderbilt, 13. Transfer from New Mexico State. I got nothing. 14, Brock Vandergriff of for Kentucky, former Georgia Bulldog. 
16, dead last is Taylor Green of Arkansas, the Boise State transfer, and 15, Lenora Sellers, South Carolina. It says, uh, although the sample size is small, the optimism meter in Columbia is running high after Sellers has shined in limited action. As a true freshman in three games last year, Sellers ran for a 36-yard score against Vandy and completed all four pass attempts for 86 yards and two scores against Furman. The South Carolina native still has plenty of room to grow, but the limited action in 23 and skill set suggest a breakout first year as the starter. I mean, that's overwhelmingly positive when you read that, but when they rank it, he's bottom third in just about every poll, just because he's new. Absolutely. I thought, gentlemen. Uh, Yahoo had him 12th, and I, I think that's a little more fair. I mean, having the kid from Baylor is a joke. Um, I think uh, the kid from New Mexico State I really love as a player, and I think that's smart for Vandy to go hire his OC. I mean, they beat Auburn, right? And he could play. Mm-hmm. He's tough. He's the kind of guy they need. But, I mean, I don't know how you can be serious and put him above uh, Sellers. I, I don't know how. You know, I think this person that wrote this for Athlon is a slave to the to the uh, rankings. You know, oh, five stars, my God. Brock Vandergriff, on what planet is he a better player than Lamar Sellers? There's not one. Um, and so that I just – that I've seen, but, I mean, I've seen enough of him and Lenore's both to know. I mean, so uh, – but, hey, look, Lenore's had three stars by his name. I think that's good. I think that – a lot of times, programs that are not amongst the blue bloods in the SEC, and sometimes the the ones we think are blue bloods that have all these outlandish expectations, Tennessee last year, Kentucky a few years ago, mm-hmm. Missouri, the Kelly Bryant year, they tend to fall on their face. And it's because they're not as good as everybody's talking them up to be. And I and I think I think there's something mental that gets into that because th- these teams that overachieve in this league – they, they forget why they overachieved. They overachieved because they outworked everybody and, and they caught some breaks and, and they played above themselves. And then they're like, we've arrived and they don't. So if you're South Carolina, rank them 15, 16, 18, kick them out of the league. I don't care. You know, I, I, I'm ready for it. All the fans out there need to be ready for it. This is not going to be an off season of praise for Shane Beamer and the South Carolina Gamecocks. And a lot of it is because of the unknown and and, and people don't want to dig any deeper. You know, Sellers like, is below Peyton Thorne. That's tough too. Yeah. You know, I mean, one. I just, that, that's a tough just, one to read. Yeah. And look, the kid from Boise state was very productive. I don't understand that. If you're going to base it on, if you compare the kid, from, take Sellers out of it, you compare the boy, kid from Boise state at Arkansas to the kid from Baylor. I mean, are you just are, to me that type of thinking is oh Oklahoma runs this big old spread offense and let Jeff Levy was Lane Kiffin he's Art Browse's son in law so boy they're gonna light it up hmm. it doesn't always work that way man I mean I just what Oklahoma did not have a quarterback that, that they did not do that well <laughs> so um I just I don't know I don't know a lot of thought goes into these but uh, you know if, if I could have a show literally guys every day and criticize the off-season lists from start to finish and it would be a terrible sure. show so i'm gonna yeah, i'm gonna this, shut up now but well, i, I no, do, no, think, you're, I do think that's low for lenora sellers i you know 12th 10th something like that you know because you, I mean, guys like brady cook and graham mertz had really good years last year i mean you don't want to you don't put a newbie over him i, I guess well that's I mean, the that, thing i mean that's the takeaway for me and you have the calculus right i think jc for where a lot of these guys are coming from they go on two things Proven track, uh, proven track records, which obviously Sellers doesn't have yet. And B, if it is a newbie, well, how many stars were next to his name coming out of high school? And he was a three-star, not a five-star. So it's 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 kind of lazy analysis. The bigger takeaway for me, because I, I could have read 10 more of these lists, and he's going to rank anywhere between 11 and 16, uh, is that you've got eight returning starters and you've got eight newbies. And the teams that have the eight returning starters, with a couple of exceptions, they're all projected to have big years. I mean, they, when, when you look at it, there's such an advantage when you have a guy who's already been there, done that, knows the offense, knows what it's like to go play on the road in front of 95,000 screaming fans. Um, and I would say this for those that are hating on the SEC and hoping there's a uh, dip off. Well, that all starts with quarterback. And when you've got Beck, Milrow, Ewers, Dart, Nico, Cook at the top of the list, uh, 
this just in, there's going to be a lot of good quarterback play again in the SEC in 2024. That is your love Chevy. Drive around the SEC.